Hi guys, Spud here from Spud's Games. Um, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Just quickly, today's video uh, is a bit of a pickup video that I'm going to do, um, and it's a CRT that I saw up on Gumtree. It cost me 20 bucks. It comes with the remote. That's a little 21 inch thing, so I think what's that, 54 centimeters, I think it is. So it's nice and handy. Um, it's a Sony Trinitron flat. But the good thing about this uh, CRT is I'm pretty sure that this one's going to be pretty easy to modify uh, to accept an RGB input. Anyway, let's get going. As you can see, I'm in the car ready to go. Um, 20 bucks it cost me. Then let's see if I can um, turn it into a TV that's 240p gaming worthwhile. So quickly, while I'm waiting for the, um, the owner to come out with the TV, I'll explain to you why this TV highlights or flag something in my head that says, hey, this could be a good TV to go and pick up. Uh, I looked at the service manual, and this has a BG3S chassis in it. Now, that's good for me, and I'll explain a little bit why later on when I actually go and open this up. But anything with a BG1, BG2, or BG3 chassis, regardless of the last letter, is always something I'm looking for, as it's go I know it's going to be an easy mod, um, and I'll explain, as I said, I'll explain why when I open this thing up. Hey guys, yes, back at home now with that TV that I went and picked up. Um, so I'll just give you a bit of an overview. I've got it out of the car. It's on a little trolley at the moment. So I'll flip my camera around and um, we'll have a look. We'll just have a look at the front of it, what's on the back, etc. And the model number. So this is it here. As you can see, it's a Trinitron. Um, I've got a set of uh, composite inputs on the front there. It is missing the little front clip. Um, cover there, it has a set of composites as, as well as a set of earphone jacks, um, the standard on off button, we come around to the back, and we can see the model number there, a uh, KVXF21M30, and um, you come down underneath here and you can see it also has a set of, well, actually two sets of composite on the back, I think actually one of those is in and one of those is out. So that's what we're looking at. Today, uh, I'll take this upstairs, get it up on the workbench, and we'll open it up and have a look at it as well as go through the service manual. So this is the TV with the back off now, um, and I've actually done the modification, uh, and I'll show you guys what I've done. Rather than me actually do the modification on the video and take ages to do it, I just do it and yeah, just run you through uh, exactly what I did to this Trin Trinitron to um, have RGB enabled. So. Obviously the back panel there, I've added in some RCAs, some red, green and blue RCAs, and I'll be using the um, the um, composite on one of the AV ins as the sink. So with all the BG1, BG2 and BG3 chassis, you can see where my wiring comes in through here. And I'll just zoom in on a particular spot where the wires go in, and what I'm looking for is that CN307 little part there and if I can just go on the other side of it and I'll try and move these cables out the road I'm not sure if I'm going to get a good shot here but um, essentially there if I can get the right light okay so there you can see red blue BLK and ground so that's essentially what we're looking for um, in these BG1 BG2 and BG3 chassis now they all have it some may have a Teletext header installed. You can see the bit at the back there where another one would go. There's actually, if it's a V1 Teletext board, it has two spots um, that it connects to the PCB on. They're the two spots there, but we're only worried about this front bit. Um, if it does have a Teletext board installed, you just essentially pull it out um, and you can desolder the, the header or the socket that's there um, and do what I've done there, or you can actually desolder the um, plug that's on the V1 board and plug it back in because once you desolder it does give you some pins to solder to so that's another option uh, but essentially yeah, those wires come straight out so the red and green and blue there as well as the blanking and the ground so that picks up the RCAs at the back here as you'll see now each line is terminated with a 75 ohm resistor um, and then ground there I've just used a couple of legs of uh, some cut off uh, resistor legs there to, to bridge the ground across. And I've had to make up a little voltage divider here on the blanking plug uh, That's because the blanking required um, Something that was under 3 volts 
So I picked up off a 5 volt and you'll see I think here the cable that comes through, the little white cable that goes underneath that yellow one, that actually comes through from underneath. Um, there's a little IC there that has a 5 volt regulator which I picked up and that's why I've got the voltage divider there just to cut that voltage down from 5 to 2.5 volts for my blanking. For those who don't know what the blanking is, that's essentially the signal that tells a TV to go into um, RGB mode. So, and you can see there's the switch that I push to, um, to enable RGB. One thing we have to make sure of is whatever sync we pick, whether it's AV1 or AV2 on the front, whatever, um, we have to be on that. Uh, once we hit, uh, we want to be able to see the RGB, otherwise you'll see it on the screen, but it won't sync. It'll just be scrolling and all scrambled through. So make sure you're on the correct AV channel that you've hooked your composite sync up to. And that's essentially it, guys. It's a pretty easy modification. Um, so the main things to look for, it doesn't matter what size the TV is. Um, but a BG1, a BG2, or a BG3 chassis. Some will end in L, S, or R. Don't don't pay too much attention to that. They're just revisions of that particular chassis, but they'll all have this particular section in it with the red, green, blue blanking and ground. You don't have to take ground from there. You could take it from somewhere else, um, but I thought since it was there, it was just an easy spot to take it from. And that's essentially it, guys. Um, as I said, doesn't doesn't matter whether it's a, a, a round tube or, or a flat tube. They all have the, the same setup. It's just a matter of taking the cables out to your RCAs, your RGB cables out. Make sure you take your ground out for your RCAs as well. Make sure you terminate 75 ohm resistors from each um, RGB line down to ground. Um, and then you just have to work out some, some TVs are okay with 5 volt blanking and you don't need that little voltage divider. But this one when I did it, it just blanked and it doesn't matter, didn't matter what I'd signal I gave it. Um, it just stayed black. So... Once I cut that voltage down to two and a half, it's still blanked, um, and then it was able to uh, display a nice little picture. So I'll now um, just put all this back together, and I'll fire it up and give you a little bit of a run through. So here's a good example of RGB versus composite on this TV. Um, the game is Fireman 2 on PS1. Uh, currently we're in composite mode. And just pay attention to the green, I think it's a teddy bear or whatever it is over to the right hand side as well as that white railing and whatnot and the detail around the men themselves. So I'll flick over to um, RGB mode and see if we can see a difference there. So as you can see there, the men much more detailed. Um, you can now tell that white line is actually a hand railing. The fire at the top is on the left hand side is a lot more detailed, um, as well as that teddy bear now over to the right hand side with a bow tie around it. You can certainly make out the detail there. So I hope that gives a good overview of um, the RGB versus composite uh, in the TV. So the mod works well. Um, I know that there is a little bit of bow at the top there, but I can't do much about that because it's just the flat TV models that these Trinitrons are, they, they are extremely hard to get perfect. Um, but that little bit of bow um, pales into comparison the difference between composite and RGB. So quite happy to wear that one. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it's been a little bit informative for you.